Okay, the old coot here coming back at you with another exciting video. We're gonna be talking about seafoam today and doing this top engine cleaner, basically your upper intake, your upper intake stuff, your fuel injectors, all that kind of stuff. So here's what happens. They usually sell these as a kit. You get a pour can version, and then you also get a spray can version that you're gonna spray with the use of like a tube that's provided and a hook. The only tools that you really need for this are a screwdriver, like a Phillips screwdriver, to undo that screw. So let's talk about specific cars. A buddy of mine needed to do this service. They're having a hard time passing smog and they basically wanted me to do this to see if it'll help with that. And usually in most cases, at least in my buddy's case, I think it's going to work. We'll see what happens. But also it's good just for regular maintenance, for the intake of the car, for the upper engine cleaning. I would say, you know, you can read the cans and the labels or whatever, but I would say basically every other oil change is when I tell my, my peeps to do this service. You can do it whenever, follow the manufacturer's instructions if that makes you more comfortable, whatever it is. But anyways, what's gonna happen here is this is a two-step process. Make sure your engine is off, your car is off entirely. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna you want to do this service when you're at about a quarter of a tank of gas. When you have a quarter of a tank of gas, that's the ideal time to do this. You're gonna get the most bang for your buck, most bang for the buck product, etc. Okay, next step in the process is, so everything is off, engine's off, and I've driven the car around, like my buddy drove to my place, and then we drove around a little bit more. So I would say maybe, like, just make sure you get your car up to operating temperature. 20 minutes, 30 minutes should be okay, just to the point where it's up to operating temperature. Okay, so shut off the car, the car's completely off. Next step in the process is you wanna take this bottle, undo the cap, there's a pull tab inside, basically pour this entire bottle into your gas tank. So undo your fuel cap, pour this into the gas tank, Basically, that ultra high concentration of this mixed with your quarter tank of gas that's in there is going to flow from your gas cap, basically all the way through your fuel system, through your injectors, and then into the engine. That's the simplest explanation I can possibly do. Okay, next step in the process is you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. And this specifically applies to if you have a Toyota Corolla a Camry. I think this also works on a RAV. This will also work on a Lexus ES350. Basically this setup, if you're looking at this in your own vehicle, this will probably work for you. But a Lexus ES350, Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla, you kind of get a sense of what's going on there. Okay, years, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I believe. Don't quote me exactly on the years, but if your car looks something like this or your engine looks something like this and you're in good shape. Okay, so what you want to do is take your screwdriver and you want to undo this screw right here. And then basically once you loosen it enough, what you're going to do is you're going to unclip these two clips, which is basically clipping in your air filter, but you're going to undo the clips and just gently pull and twist and turn until you get separation between the cover itself and the actual hose here, that's the intake hose. Try not to touch, damage, or do anything to this mass airflow sensor. That's what this is. You can disconnect it if it makes you feel more comfortable, but you should be loosening it it, loosening this whole cover off just enough to where you can fit this hook and this hose into that area so let me pause for a sec I'll kind of show you a little bit of what that's going to look like okay we're back so what's important here is that you want to try to get the hose or the tube part as close or as down in there to the throttle body, the butterfly valve on the throttle body as you can. Unfortunately, with this specific setup, four cylinder motor, right, with a 2014 to 18, 19, give or take Camry or Corolla from Toyota, you really can't get all the way down in there as close as you want. You, The manufacturer's instructions will tell you to be about a quarter of an inch away from the throttle body. Probably not going to happen. I went with something in the area of like four fingers or, or about four or five inches, give or take, to go down in there. So once you separate the cover from the hose, you want to put this in there so that it's kind of in that, in that intake hose down in there to where the hook is. And basically, you have all this extra out here to play with when you connect it back to your bottle. So let me show you all what that looks like. Hold on a sec. Okay, so just imagine you're something like this, right? Where the hose and the hook are in there. You've re-put, you've put the re-put, you've put the cover back into that hose. You've snugged up that nut just to where it's snug with your Phillips screwdriver. And basically now you have your bottle here and you have enough slack to where you can play around with this. Now, one key thing is once your tube is in there and everything's in there, at this point now, make sure you clean your engine bay of any tools. So like your screwdriver, you wanna put away, right? The, that extra empty bottle, put that away. 
Now what you can do is now you can tell your buddy to fire up the car. So your buddy's going to fire up the car and your buddy's going to keep your car revving, give or take at 2000 RPMs. There's no need to go up and down and up and down and up and down. Just keep it at a constant idle of 2000 RPMs. What you want to do is at that point, you're going to take your bottle, you're going to invert it upside down and then press down so that you're starting to spray this liquid or the contents down into that throttle body. I will do another video right after this one showing you all kind of what that looks like or as close to that as I can possibly get. So stay tuned for that video. But basically you're gonna keep pressing. It's a constant press for at least five to seven minutes. What you'll notice is you'll notice that hopefully if your buddy's doing a good job at revving which, or, or keeping the idle constant at 2000, what you're going to notice is you might get a spike in idle and then it might start fluttering. When it starts to flutter, that's how you know that there's about an ounce of liquid left in here, give or take. Stop the process, shut off the car. Then what you want to do is you want to disconnect your, let me pause for a second. I'll show you that. Hang on. Okay, so let's say you start hearing that flutter and you shake the can a little and you notice that the can's almost empty. Stop the process, right? Have your buddy shut off the car. Then what you wanna do is you wanna disconnect this hose from the can. So let's see if I can do that with one hand, which I did. So basically I disconnected the hose from the can. Now what you do is take the can, set it aside so that you don't lose it and that it doesn't fall back into the engine compartment. So what you should be left with at this point is you should still have this hook and about three or four inches of the tube down inside of your intake. Remember, that's all going to be inside of your intake. So then what's going to happen is, is basically you just reverse the process of how you got it in there. So with the car off, the engine's off, you want to unclip the air cover, undo that screw, right? Pull that off, pull the cover out enough to where you could pull this out. Do not lose this down into your throttle body. That's a major problem that you don't want to have. But anyways, once you pull this out and you remove the tube, basically then go ahead and apply your your cover again, put your clips on, reconnect or tighten up that screw again with your Phillips screwdriver so that it's snug. Everything's in there. Everything's snug and tight. And then now what you want to do is wait, <laughs> wait and do nothing. So a timer has been ticking since you shut the engine off when you after, sorry, after you had applied the product into the intake. Usually if you wait about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even a little bit more like 25 minutes or so, then you can go ahead and clear your engine bay. Make sure everything's out. Make sure you properly take care of this hose and make sure this is out of your engine bay. Make sure that can of spray is also out of the engine bay. Check for any tools or whatever. Make sure nothing's going to fall in there when you restart the car. So basically, after you've waited, so you've applied the product, you've waited about 15 to 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes is even better. I wouldn't, I, I would say don't go over 25 minutes though. But once you hit about that 25 minute mark, what I would do then is go ahead and fire the engine up. You may get some hesitation. You may get some sputtering or whatever the case may be. But once you do that, you're going to start seeing the smoke. So coming out of the exhaust pipe, you're going to start getting a whole bunch of smoke, the smoke fest. And what you want to do is you want to drive the car for, I would say about five to 10 miles, maybe even 10 to 15 miles so that you can flush out the system. What this is going to do is this is going to clean that top engine, right? It's going to clean the valves from the backside, right? From the top engine side. It's also going to clean all the way down your exhaust. It, it'll help to clean out your oxygen sensor or at least clean it. And it'll also help to clean out your catalytic converter. So if, if a mechanic or the dealership is telling you that you need to change your catalytic converter, you may want to try this for passing smog and see what it does. But that first minute or two of driving, you're probably not going to see a whole bunch of smoke. Usually the smoke kicks in about two to three minutes into the driving and use spirited acceleration, they call it, right? So it's a good idea, like you'll see the directions right there. It's a good idea to do this maybe next to a freeway on-ramp or if you're at the bottom of a hill, you know, a nice hill where there's a freeway where you can get up to spirited acceleration, whatever that means. You basically want to drive it like you, you know, took it from someone else <laughs> to, get, to get all that gunk, all that carbon build out out of there. Anyway, stay tuned. I am going to do another video showing you all how this looks when it's all connected and set up and how the can is supposed to be upside down and all that good stuff. By the way, you are going to have about an ounce of liquid in here that just will not come out of the can. It's totally fine. What you can do is take this over to your gas cap, right where your fuel tank is, turn it upside down and just spray it down into 
the fuel tank if you're able to do that or at least you know where you put your gasoline nozzle out at the gasoline store and just spray this in there and try to get that last little ounce out or whatever you can but anyway stay tuned for the next video i will put links to this and also the other can right they should be sold as a pair so here's the pour version again here's the spray version usually they're sold as a pair i'll try to get that link and put it down in the description also in the comment section anyways i'm the old coot and i'll catch you all in the next second video and read the labels Take your time. I can't do it all in this video, but take your time and read the labels of how you're supposed to do this. You can always go to Seafoam's own website. And there's plenty of videos on there about how to do this. But anyways, check those out. I'm the Okut, and I'll catch you all in the next exciting video. So Toyota or Lexus, Camry Corolla, I believe the RAV4 is in there, and I believe the Lexus EX350, ES350 falls in that range of like four-cylinder motors, air boxes over here, intake, etc. Last warning I'm going to give you is do not, do not touch that mass airflow sensor if you can avoid it at all costs because you'll cause a lot of damage and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But anyways, there you go. I'll catch you on the next exciting video.